Welcome to the Delmarva Almanac. Each week we connect you to the best of Delmarva. I'm your host, Dana Kester McCabe. Genealogy is becoming more and more popular with television shows and online subscription services like Ancestry.com. My father-in-law, Vernon McCabe, had only a passing interest in history when some family business led him to a lifelong fascination with genealogy. His sister had already been bitten by the genealogy bug and had been trying to get him interested in their family tree, which went back many generations right here on Delmarva. When their father passed away and some of the property he bequeathed to them did not have a clear title, Vernon decided to research the land's provenance himself. This revealed some interesting family and local history, and he was hooked. Now, this was 30 years ago when the personal computer was just starting to become available to the general public. Vernon visited local libraries, county land patent offices, historical archives, and attended family reunions. And he began simply calling people in the phone book with the last names he found on his family tree. The focus of his research became one John McCabe, the earliest person in this country with that family name that he could trace back in his own line. But unlike many genealogists, he was not simply interested in going backwards. He wanted to find all the other people who were descended from John McCabe. He has compiled a book now in its third edition with over 47,000 names of his McCabe cousins. He's also compiled a book of relatives on his mother's side, the Quillens. It's not surprising that he found that he was related to many people here on Delmarva. But he also found that he had relatives with diverse ethnic backgrounds beyond what he knew to be his own white Scots-Irish heritage. I recently visited him and asked him to share some of his experiences searching for his family. Here is Vernon McCabe. I'm glad I got started and I thank my sister. Oh, that's by the way, that's Emma Grace McCool from Elkton, Maryland. Um, After all those years of trying to get me interested, she finally did. And I'm glad because I've had a lot of time uh, after I finished serious work, employment uh, on my hands. And uh, if I had not had genealogy, I don't know what I would have done with my time. Well, I did spend a lot of time going backwards. I got back to Charlemagne and even before that, Alexander the Great. And, I mean, all the big names you can think of, I had, and I was descended from all of them. Anyway, I had a pretty big chart going back many, many, many generations. And then my sister informed me that one of our ancestors that I was in the chain going backwards didn't have any children. So all of those nice ancestors were gone, I had to wipe them out. I decided that if I start with the one furthest back and got all of the descendants, that more people would be interested because they could place relationships with all of their cousins and uh, there might be more interest involved. Uh, and I think that's the way it's turned out. I think it is. Uh, half of Sussex County and Worcester County are probably in that McCabe and Cullen book and it's very common to go out and start hearing about genealogy and uh, somebody will say, are you in the book? Are you in the book? Well, everybody knows what the book is and uh, they all uh, uh, they all take some interest in being cousins to someone else that would otherwise be strangers. I was sitting in my office on a Sunday afternoon and I thought, okay, I'll start. And I looked up a number and probably somewhere in Worcester County and said, uh, Mrs. Smith, my name is Vernon McCabe and I'm trying to do the family tree and I'm hoping you can help me. What do you want, son? And I said, well, I'm trying to figure out who your father and mother were and your kids and put it all on the computer. And she said, son, I don't think I'm going to tell you a damn thing and hung up on me. But since that time, 
I never had anybody else hang up on me. They all were tickled to death to, to be included, and I think that's where it got out that they were in the book. You asked me about would people talk to me when I called them. Well, not only would they talk to me, we're no longer strangers, even if we only met on the telephone. They, I've never had anyone give me a bad check for a book. And I know that the McCaves have just as many ornery people as any other clan does. But when you're cousins, you don't give bad checks. There, I was in physical therapy one time and uh, got to know all the people there over a couple months period. And they found out I did genealogy and asked if I would help them with theirs and a couple I did help. And of course, everybody in there, we started calling cousins. There was a black guy in there who had already done his uh, family tree, so he and I got a big kick out of calling each other cousin. And there was a little black girl in there. Uh, well, she wasn't a girl. She was mid-20s or something like that. Very quiet, demure. Uh, and one day she came up to me and she said, Mr. Cave, would you do mine? And I said, well, Cassie, uh, I've never done any uh, black uh, uh, genealogy, and you say you're from Virginia, Eastern Shore. She said, yes. I said, and your parents, did they come from slaves? And she said, yes. I said, well, I'll, I'll try. She had to go home and get some uh, people that were born before 1940 so that I could look up on the census. And but day the next time she came in, she gave me a list, and then I went back. And uh, the next day I came back and said, uh, Cassie, of course everybody's listening. I said, Cassie, guess what? I said, you and I are cousins. And she said, what? I said, yeah, we're cousins. You go back to the Scarboroughs, and I'm descended from the Scarboroughs, and there was a female who was on the plantation, and apparently she took in a field hand, and they ended up having four kids. They were listed in the census, and it gave their name as the uh, field hand's last name, and she claimed them as her, her own kids. I said, but we both are, or we both come from the Scarborough, so it was. Well, the nice part about it was that here this demure little girl came out of herself and she started to talk to people, uh, started calling me cousin, uh, calling everybody else cousin, and I feel like all the 35 years I've been working on it was worth it just that one thing. Next week, we'll hear the conclusion of this interview when Vernon McCabe will tell us about his search for the parents of his ancestor, John McCabe. Well, that's all for this edition of the Delmarva Almanac. Be sure to follow us on Facebook or Twitter, and next week, join us to learn more about our local culture and get connected to our natural wonders. We'd like to thank our community partners, the Friends of Delmarva Public Radio, and our underwriters for their help in bringing this program to you, our audience. If you'd like to become an underwriter for this program, visit delmarvaalmanac.com slash support. Our theme music was provided by Brightside Studio. This show has been a Moonshell production. Thanks for listening. Until we meet again, may the rhythms and tides of Delmarva bring you good fortune. <laughs>